Good morning and welcome to you all this morning to this service of worship on this first Sunday of October. We're very glad you're with us today in worship. Cynthia Coffin Langdon, our wonderful Director of Faith Formation, has COVID and she is very sick with it. So we are making some adjustments, which pay attention children who are here because here's one of the adjustments. We're asking all the kids who are here to get a flag from Sean. Sean, if you could just stand up or see, we've got flags up there. So, and any of you who would like to join Sean and the other children, I'm talking adults, get a flag and during the opening hymn, you'll be processing down and putting the flags in the vase on the communion table. The flags are from a variety of, country, of countries, and it is in recognition that today is World Communion Sunday. Also missing from our service of worship is Jessica Schroeder, who is, as you know, our organist and uh, accompanist. And Jessica is in the Twin Cities, where her husband, Richard Carrick, was intending to run the Twin Cities Marathon, which was canceled. So, <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? Because it's going to be too hot. Anyway, so Richard and uh, Jessica and Lark and Sylvia are all down in the Twin Cities where they are going to go out for brunch. Those are the missing pieces, but otherwise we're all here and we're so glad that you're here as well. We're especially glad, Warren and I, that two of our dear friends from the Twin Cities are here visiting. You know, small congregation, what happens? Scott Applewick and Ed Suitsman. Dear friends from the Twin Cities who are here visiting. It's wonderful to have them with us. So those of you who are here today, whether you're a visitor or a regular, if you would find in your pews, I forget this every week and today I'm remembering, you'll find a friendship pad, which is something about this size and it has paper in it. We hope that you'll sign your name. Give us information about yourselves, especially we want to know your contact information, if you have a phone number or an email address, or if there's been any change in your contact information, please write it on one of those pieces of paper so that we can collect it during the, or at the, follow, at the end of the service today. I believe that those are all of my announcements. I'm looking at Patrick, any more? Okay, so will you now please stand and greet one another with the signs and the words of peace and pick up a flag from Sean. Friends, will you please now remain standing and join me in our responsive call to worship. The body of Christ is a most beautiful creation. The body of Christ is every shade and hue every size and breadth and gender. The body of Christ speaks every language, sings ancient melodies, and hums new tunes. The body of Christ dances and weeps and celebrates. 
and mourns. Let us pray together. Come to us, blessed spirit of love and hope, as we worship with people of faith the world around. Remind us that we are each such a small part of your body, though together we are strong and beautiful and ready to serve as you call us to do. Hear us now in the words Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. be seated and if there are if you want to come up for a children's message you do want to stay where you are totally up to you no pressure you can sit there you can see well it <laughs> you're coming from the other direction yay oh good so you heard that Cynthia is sick. 
I know, what a drag. She has COVID and she feels really crummy. She's our usual uh, faith direction, faith formation director. Anyway, so I'm on the hook today, but it's a good thing that it's a subject that I like, which is World Communion Sunday. So this is, what is this? A globe, yeah. Do you recognize anything on this globe? Can you maybe point out some place that you know? Yeah, that's, yep, South America. And yeah, you're getting close. Minnesota, there's Minnesota, good. And what's way up here? What's that? Canada. Canada. And I wonder if you know what this whole big area is. Africa. Africa. Did you know that? No, oh, I know. Sometimes it's hard to imagine those places so far away. Down there is Antarctica. Yes, down there is Antarctica. That's exactly right. I know somebody who's been there. Can you imagine all the way to Antarctica? I don't know why, but that's where they went. And let's see, there's some other interesting places. I like this place right here. Do you know what that is? India. I like India because that's where my children were born. They were born in India and we adopted them from there. So this is a globe that I keep in my office. Sometimes when I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed by sad things that are happening in other places in the world, I pick up my globe and I hold it close to me like that and I pray. I know that it's something that maybe doesn't help those people in that other place directly, but sometimes I imagine that God wants to pick up the whole world and hold it close and say, please, please be better, do better. Stop fighting and love each other. I don't know whether God does that or not, but I like to think that maybe that's something that God would do. This morning, when you walked around with these cool flags, whoops, some of them didn't get in, there we go. There are so many, every country, all these different colored countries all those amazing places all have flags. We didn't include them all. There are way too many. But this is sort of a representative sample. So, do you know that one? Canada. Canada, exactly. And, uh -huh. and, You're really good at flags. Yes, that's right. Oh, here's an easy one. United States. United States. This morning, when we have communion, oh, and here's one. I like this one, too. Do you know that one? Japan? Yep, this, the land of the rising sun. This morning, when we have communion, we're going to be thinking about Christians even though there are a lot of different religions in all of these countries, people practice very different religions. Even so, we know there are Christians also in all of these countries. And today, on World Communion Sunday, we're going to think about how everybody in these places that are Christian are going to come to one common table. What's even more exciting is that when you come back into the sanctuary, you will join us in this room at this one common table for communion today. But you're gonna learn a little bit about communion because Sean's gonna do some teaching and Katie's gonna help, and you're gonna learn all about it so that when you come back, you'll be ready, okay? Can we have a prayer before you go? We thank you, God, that on this World Communion Sunday, 
we take even just a few minutes to think about how you are present in every place around the earth. Be with us this day, we humbly ask. Amen. Okay, you're more than welcome to go upstairs for Sunday school, and then you'll come back down for communion if you want to. Or you can stay. Up to you. But this is Katie, and that's Sean, and they're going to be teaching. Okay. 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 A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Repidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do for this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not?
I begin today with a prayer for World Communion Sunday written by Safaya Fosua for the Africana Worship Book. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit, one in mission, in union and communion with each other and with you. Today we confess fumblings and failures in accomplishing unity as we set aside yet another day to remind ourselves of the task. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for us all. Amen. It was in 1936 that the Presbyterians here in the United States, in an effort to mend the wounds from World War I, created an event that they called World Communion Sunday. The idea caught on, and it expanded until in just a few short years, in 1940, hoping that recognizing our common Christianity with German Christians, there might be a way toward peace. It became then a lasting tradition, though peace remained elusive. After World War II, the National Council of Churches attempted to expand the tradition to an international observation, a way to prevent future war. I like the idea of World Communion Sunday, but as a means to prevent war, well, it has been largely unsuccessful. So why bother? Of course, we try lots of things that don't end up working. I remember attending a forum addressing childhood poverty during which the presenters were posing one idea after another, all of which cost money, of course. There were short-term ideas like the child welfare tax credit and long-term possibilities like free preschool education. Finally, an audience member, clearly frustration in his voice, said, we've tried all those things. They don't work. One of the presenters went on to say, they all worked, just not permanently. I think of that exchange when reading the story from Exodus that Andy just read about the weary and thirsty Israelites who, having been freed from slavery, still complained because the trip was hot and long and they didn't have water to drink. Why did you bring us out of Egypt just to die of thirst out here in the wilderness, here with our children and our animals? Yeah, yeah, we're no longer slaves, but this isn't working. It must frustrate God that her children expect things to get better on the first and too often only attempt. Yes, we saved some children with the tax credit. It provided good nutrition for children and families. And yes, we provided one generation of children a good head start. Isn't that enough? Why isn't it working? Yes, we called for Christians around the world to actually think of our international common table when we ponder going yet again to war, but it didn't work. 
So why are we bothering? Yes, we got out of Egypt through some incredible miracles. And yes, we can now raise our children as free beings, but what good does that do if we're just going to die for lack of water? Why did we bother? I looked for some different resources for today. Words written to recall the original intent of those Presbyterians so long ago when they created a World Communion Sunday as a means for peacemaking in a world ravaged by war. I need to be reminded that the world is very big and complex and conflicted and dangerous and experienced in extremely diverse ways. I need some tangible experiences that communicate that God, who is, thankfully, quite a bit bigger than the world, is still hopeful that humans will someday figure out that war does nothing but bring about death and devastation and bitterness and sorrow. I look for signs that even though I am thirsty now, still, God intends for all of us to be free human beings and will slake my thirst for a better life for all humanity. Even though our little bits of gluten-free bread and thimbles of grape juice won't give us enough nourishment that we need to be fierce warriors for peace, at least it reminds us that we do not come to the table alone. In my search for some new resources for the celebration of this day, I came across both the prayer with which I began this meditation and now this one with which I will close it. It's published in The Wideness of God's Mercy, Litanies to Enlarge Our Prayer. Today on this World Communion Sunday, let us pray for the Christian church in all its complexity, richness, and diversity. For the Roman Catholic Church, its glorious traditions, its disciplines of holiness, its worship, rich with the religious passion of the centuries and its noble company of martyrs, teachers, and saints. For the Eastern Orthodox Church, its secret treasures of mystical experience, its venerable liturgy, its regard for life in community, and its common will, as a source for authority. For the Congregationalist concern, for the rightful independence of the soul and the wisdom of the group. For the Baptist emphasis on person regeneration and the conscious relation of the mature soul to the Lord. For the powerful ability of Methodists to awaken the conscience of Christians to social evils and for their emphasis upon the witness of experience and the fruits of the disciplined life. For the Presbyterian reverence for the sovereignty of God and their confidence in God's faithfulness to his covenant. For their sense of the moral law expressing itself in constitutional government. For the Quaker witness to the perpetual real presence of the inner light of every human soul and for their faithful continuance of a free prophetic ministry and Christian nonviolence. For the Lutheran devotion to the grace of God and the word of God enshrined in the ministry of word and sacrament. For the Anglican Church, its reverent and temperate ways, through its Catholic heritage and its Protestant conscience, its yearning over the divisions of Christendom and its longing to be used 
as a house of reconciliation for the Pentecostal and Evangelical Free Churches, large and small, in slum and suburb and rural isolation, moved by the Spirit to speak the gospel to those unwelcome or uninspired in other places. We thank you, O oh God, and bless your holy name. Christian unity, the prayer at the beginning, is only genuinely expressed when we respect diversity and keep trying. In 1936, when World Communion Sunday was first conceived, it was no less difficult to imagine a God who loved the entire world and all of its tribal inhabitants than it is today. No less difficult and no less needed. And because that is true, that's why we bother. Amen.
Please be seated. I invite you now to dig deep, be generous, as you are able, for the work of this church as it carries out its mission, not only here in this building, but outside of this building, in this community, and beyond this community, in a world striving for peace. Our ushers will now receive the morning offering. Let us pray. Bless these gifts and those who give them. May they be joined with others for the work you have entrusted to us. Amen.
Please be seated. And join me now in the communion liturgy. Beloved, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. On this day, members of Christ's body gather at tables spread with elements that represent many cultures. Words are spoken in languages we know, but also with words that sound strange to our ears. Bread of many kinds is broken at one table. Hopeful people seek unity of spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have called us from the east and west and north and south to celebrate that we too are your people, one in purpose and mission, unified in our common love for all the parts of Christ's body. Forgive us when we act as if this is not true, when we disrespect the differences between cultures and nations, as if what divides us means more than what unites us in you. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to love all who you love. In the name of our trusted Savior, Jesus. On the night that he gathered with his disciples for a meal, after they had eaten, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way also, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, this is a new covenant in my blood. I tell you, I shall not drink of this again until I drink it new with you in God's reign. Ministering to you in his name, we offer to you all this bread and this cup. You are invited to come forward to the stations that will be here, going from the middle out and back to your seats. After the choir is finished singing, they are invited to come forward for our communion meal. This table does not belong to us but to the one who has invited us to it. Therefore, no matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, you are invited to receive nourishment at this table.
Let us pray. Most gracious God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of the living Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, this is the feast of the people of God. May this nourishment at this common table bring you hope and strength to live and work for peace. Amen. <laughs> 